Hey guys, I'm taking a little break from the Philco 18 restoration project to take a look inside this box, which is very, very relevant, as you shall soon see. A little bit of an impulse purchase off of eBay. I'd seen these before, but never really paid that much attention to them or took a close look at one until I saw this. So the seller posted some really good photos. I hadn't realized quite how nice they were. Particularly like the uh, style of knobs on it. So, what is it? Well, it's a piece of Philco test equipment. In particular, it is a signal generator, which is what you see when you look at all the alignment instructions for these radios. They're always mentioning this particular model, which I think is a 77. Well, there's no mark on it anywhere, but uh, I will pull up the service info for it and we shall see for sure. So, as you can see, zoom in a little here, the knobs are just like the radio knobs, or at least the latter uh, Philco knobs starting in, I think, around 36 or so. They only uh, use these, I think, on a few models for the band switch. I uh, picked one up a while ago thinking I might need one for a, uh, a radio someday, but perhaps it uh, came off one of these. The reason I went for this in, a, in addition to just, uh, I think, it looking cool, this one seemed to be in an especially nice condition. This is the first time I've ever actually seen one up close. Uh, it's smaller than I expected. I mean, the front is large, but uh, it's very shallow and does not weigh all that much. Leather handles rotted away, unfortunately, but, you know, that'll happen. This is from mid-30s, so uh, that's to be expected. No power cord. That's all right. Put a new one on that. Oh, wait, no. Yes, there is. What about that? Looks like it's retractable, I think. Or perhaps that's the interlock, and that's where it would plug into. Sure, seems to be the same dimensions as the standard AC power cord, but I don't think that's going to pull out. There's no sense in me messing with this before I look at it. Now, this might also be battery powered. I recall uh, that there were some, or it might be both AC and DC. If this is battery powered, that could very well be where you plug in the, uh, the cord to charge it. And these holes in the back, I can pretty clearly see that there are trimmer capacitors in there uh, for... Uh, Calibrating the sucker. So it can do four bands and uh, audio out. Or sorry, five bands. So the lowest band is 120 to 350 kilocycles or kilohertz. Then we got 350 to about a thousand, about a thousand to 3.5 meg, 3.5 meg to about 11 meg, and 11 meg to 35 meg. Not surprisingly, those pretty well correspond to the bands on a lot of these radios. Uh, so the AM band is split up into several segments, but uh, like 3.5 to 11, I think that's pretty common. There's some of these for the short wave, so I'm looking at this uh, Philco 18 I'm working on right now, and the second band goes 1.5 to 4, uh, which is pretty close to the C range here. I especially like the action on this. Very nice smooth vernier action and a very, very nifty... A dial pointer. It's scraping just ever so slightly. Might have gotten a little mushed in shipping. It seems to be bent back a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Nice, nice, nice action. So I am going to go pull up service info. Unless it gets a little sticky too. Probably needs a little bit of grease on those bearings. Uh, look, pull up service info before I crack this open. Now let me finish going over the, the features here. So this is power, modulation on, modulation off. So with it off, you just get a continuous wave of whatever frequency you've dialed in. Modulation on, it's going to uh, AM modulate it to uh, probably something like one kilohertz tone. Uh, variable attenuator here, basically a level pot on the output. And then a range of 110, 100, or 1000. So it'll be a resistor voltage divider. 
in there. In addition, there's a medium and a high output range here, and then this is ground. Rather odd, small little plug holes there. I'm not exactly sure what the original test leads would have looked like. Perhaps something like this. Let's see if this fits in here. Kind of, a little loose. Take the other end, this might fit even better. So I'd be inclined to, uh, to use something like this with it rather than swapping these out for a more modern connector type. Kind of I'll keep the original look. I think I've got, yep, yeah, I've got both a positive and a negative with the stallion. This came from a, uh, a meter that I no longer have. So I might uh, just repurpose these for this uh, signal generator. Down this for the output. Got an alligator clip on the negative already, although no insulator on it. And this would be handy for injecting a signal manually, but uh, I think a clip would be a little more uh, more practical to use with that. I dug through my memory and was pretty sure this was a Philco 077 and sure enough a Google image search confirmed it. Right away several examples popped up including this guy which leads to a thread on the Philco forum which I think I may very well have read through back in 2008. And that's where I first learned about this. And included there is a schematic. Take a zoomed in look at that in a moment, right but now I'm reading through this. So I mentioned uh, interesting filter arrangement on the 120 uh, volt AC input. Wonder if there's any concerns about the ground. Uh, well, <laughs> fortunately that's where kind of where the discussion trails off, but I'm hoping to find a little more info if I keep digging around online. And here is an enlarged version of the schematic, and here's that AC line filter he was talking about. So, in addition to the usual caps across the AC going to ground, then we've got some inductors and more caps. I've seen this before on vintage test equipment. That's to uh, really filter out any noise from the AC line. And the rest of it uh, is fairly straightforward. So it's definitely, this is only AC powered, no battery involved. So we've got a center tapped. Uh, secondary here uh, for, the, uh, for the B plus supply and this will be the filament supply. A 6x5G rectifier. They didn't want to use a dedicated winding just for the rectifier tube so they used the 6x5 which I think was pretty new back when this came out. What's different about this is that uh, it has a separate cathode from the heater filament so you can use the same heater with this as the other tubes. Or something like a uh, Type 80, the filament and the cathode are one and the same, so you have to have a dedicated filament winding just for the rectifier tube. Problem with 6x5s, though, some of you may have heard about, is especially the early ones have a tendency to short between the cathode and the heater, and then uh, very bad things will happen, usually burning out the power transformer. So let's hope this one is all right. Uh, the other two tubes, well, we got a 6J7G and a 6J5G. I hope this is good because the uh, audiophile triode crowd really like these 6J5s. It looks like, uh, so here's the output attenuator. Uh, high, medium. And there's a range switch and there's a variable. It's going through a shield over to this point. So one of these will be the RF oscillator mixer or uh, amplitude modulator, which I'm guessing is this, and the 6J5 is probably the audio oscillator, or I might have that backwards. And then here's all the switchable ranges. So it's switching in a couple inductors, and then you've got a trimmer cap to uh, calibrate the range. So far this is all the info I have, but it's certainly a good start. Well, this is pretty nifty. At MyVintageTV.com, I found a bunch of manuals, including the instruction and service manual for the 7077. So here's the operating instructions. Uh, 
Well, here we go. 6J7 is the oscillator, and 6J5 is the modulation generator, in other words, audio oscillator, and 6X5 is a rectifier. Alright, I mentioned how to calibrate the dial. Alright, let's see what's in the server sheets. Looks like they're repeating some of the same info there. In fact, uh, <laughs> looks like the first section is uh, pretty much identical. And then here's a schematic which is a bit clearer than the other one we were just looking at. And that's all you get. Alright, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and print out the schematic here and get back to the workbench and pop that thing open. Boy, there sure are a lot of screws on this thing. Appear to be brass. There's those the front with the very nice black lacquered recess areas. I was going to pull up on this to, take, to get it off, but the knobs just started coming right off. So, Ooh, that's very thin. But there's a steel backing behind it. Oh, and it comes out easily enough. Whoa! Wasn't expecting that. So the power supply filter is attached to the cabinet. So so convenient and it's hard wired too. You kind of need to see that they use the same Bakelite block <laughs> in this that they uh, use in their radios. So there is one half of the uh, filter so there'll be two caps inside that Bakelite block down there and then there's two coils and then there's well, the Bakelite block will be two caps on that side. So the tubes, and if I had to guess, these are all originals, certainly all G-types. That is indeed a Filco. So I'm lucky this thing hasn't seen a whole lot of use in this time of some life. It's a little flimsy in here. Big power transformer. Rather small. And there's a variable capacitor for the variable tuner. And here's the output attenuator, variable pot, and then the range switch. Oops, off camera. Here's what I'm pointing to. And here is the range switch with the switchable oscillators and trimmer caps for calibration. And this big old guy here, I imagine, is the coil for the audio oscillator. A few paper caps. And some pretty ancient resistors. As for the heck of it, I'll check a few, but... Since they use the same components in this that they use in their radios, and I have no re reason to imagine that these are going to be any in any better condition than the old one, than the radio ones. It's probably all the way out of tolerance. Yeah, this should be a 20K. It's measuring 22 and a half. Not horrible, but certainly off. And just for the heck of it, let's check this guy. Body and dot. 500? Well, it's inserted with some other stuff, so I don't even know if I can actually measure that. Let's just assume that a bunch of these parts are going to be out of tolerance. So I want to replace the paper caps and all that. So I really don't see much point in trying to power this up as is, especially with these caps on the AC line. I want to replace those with safety caps. 
for now I just wanted to get a look inside and assess things. It uh, certainly looks to be in fine condition, all original, definitely restorable. Uh, hmm. I would like to know if this power transformer is good though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these two wires and see if I can bypass this cap. Pull out the rectifier and power this up. See if the condition of the power transformer is in. Probably good. Especially since there's no power cord for this so nobody could have inadvertently just powered it up to see if it worked. Okay, I uh, removed the wires going to the chassis and I disconnected this Bakelite block intact and temporary power cord and I put out the 6x5 rectifier. I've got this turned on so when I turn on my PR57 that will supply power to this. And here we go. Yes, the tubes are lighting up. Cool. So we know we got a good 6.3 volt supply. Now let's see about the secondary on that 6x5. Well, let's see if we can figure out where the secondary is going from that transformer. You see, it looks like one wire going here and one going there, I think. So let's see what we got between these two. 278 volts. Seems reasonable. And yeah, about 138 on either side to ground, which is the chassis. So I think the power transformer is good. So well, I think this is going to be very restorable, but I'm not going to do it right now because I want to get back to the radios. But for in the future, whenever I uh, at the time, I hope to go through and uh, do some servicing on this. Just a little look underneath now that the other part of the chassis has been removed. See, so we got some larger resistors here. There's a big light block. So let's see. All these caps are 0.15 microfarad. That might be a little tricky to track down. We used to sing 0 0.015, but these are 0.15. So, uh, I'll have to look around to uh, see if anybody carries those. See, like here's the Philco 18 schematic I'm working on. I got 0 0.015. 0 0.15, that's a little, it's a little large for a, a safety cap, but uh, I imagine if somebody's got them somewhere. Alright, so that is going to be it for this, I, I'm afraid. Hope you enjoyed this initial look at a Philco. 077 RF generator from the mid 30s. I'm guessing about 1936.